My name is Harley, and I've been with my boyfriend Dan for five years. Lived with him for three. I love Dan more than anything in this world. He's my best friend, my partner in crime, my biggest past, and my number one supporter. I honestly couldn't imagine my life without him anymore. We both work in the food service industry. He's a chef and I'm a server. Food is his biggest passion, and while being a line cook doesn't pay much, it's worth it to see him do something he loves. Working in food service means we work some pretty weird hours. It's not uncommon for us to get off of work after midnight, come home, quickly scarf down our dinner, then head to bed and sleep until around 11 a.m. or 12 p.m. Dan has a much easier time falling asleep than I do. Most nights, as soon as his head touches the pillow, he's out like a light. I, on the other hand, struggle a bit more to settle my mind and get comfortable. This usually leads to me plugging in my headphones to watch YouTube or scroll through Reddit until I fall asleep while trying not to move or make too much noise that would wake him up. Though, he is a pretty heavy sleeper, so I never have to worry about it much. Dan has always been a very... animated dreamer. He talks in his sleep every single night. Sometimes he even sings or raps. When we first started sleeping together, he would speak so clearly, I honestly thought he was still awake. Sometimes I like to talk to him while he's asleep, and tell him about the little nocturnal conversations in the morning. He also has a tendency to sleepwalk on occasion, which can be a bit worrisome. Dan sleeps naked, and I can't very well just let him walk out of our apartment in his birthday suit in the middle of the night. Recently, though, his dreams have been getting kind of odd. And when I say recently, I mean within the past year. It started with what seemed to be a few bad dreams. I always keep one earphone out just in case he says something funny or if he gets out of bed and I need to hear. One night, Dan began tossing and turning and whimpering. Literally whimpering like a scared puppy. Suddenly, he rolled over to me, his eyes wide open. His expression was terrified and frantic. Harley? He called out with a trembling voice. The fact that he didn't see me even though his eyes were open was enough for me to realize he was still asleep. Hey, hey, it's okay. I cooed quietly and gently cupped his face in my hands. I'm right here. Everything's alright. Dan let out a relieved sigh before snuggling against me and pulling my body tight against his. For the rest of the night, any time I moved, his eyes would shoot open again with the same frantic expression, and I would have to calm him down and let him know I wasn't going anywhere. I asked him about it the next morning, and he said he didn't remember a thing, though he said he had a really weird dream but he couldn't remember what about. This went on for about three days. The next two nights after that were calm, and I figured he'd just had a few bad dreams due to stress from work. About a week after that, give or take a few days, something even weirder happened. We were laying in bed like normal when suddenly Dan just got up and walked over to our bedroom window. I pulled my earphone out and called to him. Dan, what are you doing, baby? At first, he didn't answer, so I called to him again. He then placed his finger on the glass as if he was pointing to something. They're coming, he muttered. Who's coming? I was starting to get a bit worried, so I made my way over to the window to see what he was talking about. 
We live in a second-story studio apartment on the side of a fairly busy road. It's not uncommon to see people walking or driving by even late at night. But that wouldn't explain what he was talking about. They want inside. Dan suddenly wrapped his arms around my waist in an almost possessive and protective manner. We can't let them in. I won't let them in. I won't let them hurt you. Though I was a little freaked out, I simply smiled and led Dan back to bed. Every night for a month after that, Dan would get out of bed and either walk to stand in front of our door or in front of our window. He would mutter something about not letting them in or them getting closer before I would pull him back to bed. Every morning, I would ask him about it, and he'd tell me he had no clue what I was talking about. Nothing else seemed strange about him, though. During the day, he wasn't any more fatigued than usual. He didn't seem paranoid or scared. Everything was fine until he'd go to bed. One night, he jolted out of bed suddenly and ran for the door. I was worried he might run out, so I jumped out of bed to stop him. They're here, he yelled in a panic. Before I could even ask Dan what was going on, he went on the defense. He started screaming at the door, telling them to leave. They weren't allowed to come to him. They weren't welcome. With every passing minute, he seemed to become more and more agitated. You can't have him, he yelled before punching a hole into the wall next to the door. Daniel Thomas, screaming his name like that, seemed to startle him awake enough. Huh? What? He looked around, confused, and then whined about his hand hurting. I led him to the bathroom, patched up the little gash across his knuckle, then led him back to bed. He was out like a light again as soon as his knees touched the bed. While he didn't talk the rest of the night, he still tossed and turned quite a bit. I was becoming steadily more concerned, as this didn't just seem to be a reoccurring nightmare. Whatever was happening was very real, to him at least. I tried asking him to see a doctor or therapist but he said there was no purpose in wasting the money when he felt fine. I thought maybe he was just jumping to conclusions. Maybe I was just being paranoid. Until a few nights ago when Dan suddenly sat up in bed, I was prepared to bring him back to bed from the door, but he didn't get out. He just stared into the darkest corner of our room, which is next to our dresser. Dan? They're here, he whispered, without moving. They got in. His eyes were wide open and focused in on that one corner. Dan, you're freaking me out. Suddenly, that attention was turned to me. They aren't of this world, but they're trapped. They're angry. They feast in the dark, but want to devour your light. Don't let them take your light, Harley. Don't let them. I won't let them hurt you. I could feel my heart sink to the pit of my stomach. His voice was so serious and his eyes bore into mine. He pulled me close to him and pressed my head against his chest. I could hear his heart beating under my ear and tried to use that to forget what he'd just said. Lately, though... I've been becoming more fearful. I've started seeing shadows move in the dark parts of our apartment. Our electric bill has shot through the roof from me trying to keep the lights on at all times. I haven't been able to sleep right because I keep having these nightmares that make me wake up screaming in a cold sweat, but I can never remember what they're about. I don't know what's happening. But my boyfriend's dreams are starting to scare me. Thank you so much for listening. 
and thank you to the incredible authors that allow me to narrate their stories. This author's links will be in the description. Feel free to send me your own scary story at the email on the screen. And until next time, sleep tight.